the angel beckons. As you tumble into its mind, your consciousness twists, strains, and bursts, spilling into the universe. You see it now, for the first time. A tapestry of words, lines, and verses thread themselves through every corner of existence. With a few twists of your tongue, you could change it all. And you do. Your words reverberate through reality. A few utterances reverse the finality of death and the frigid linearity of mortal existence. With another sentence, you bestow upon each person the smallest droplet of your newfound power. All across the sky realms, everyone, from the noble to the downtrodden, feels a surge of understanding beyond that of any cipher wizard. The long dead, silent for centuries or more, find they need only open their eyes and breathe. Among them are your companions. Basalt, Orla, Frost and the Duchess stand ashore, watching your ascendancy to something beyond godhood. And here, in the Oneric Isles, you seal yourself away in a womb of cipher. A city soon propagates around you, but you pay it no heed, intervening as little as possible. Paths stretch ahead to places both sunlit and dark, and even your new vision cannot see which one humanity will choose. Jack Basalt retires from mercenary work, drifting through the Sky Realms in a rickety old boat. Frost marries his lover, Samuel, and they raise their children with stories of skyfaring adventures on a quiet little island on the edge of the Sky Realms. The Duchess, her youth restored, begins a journey to find her daughter, which takes her to the Underlands. In a grove of newly blossoming trees, she sees that beaming smile at last. And the Embarian finally sets down her armor, allowing the burden of her ancestors to finally lift from her shoulders. Thanks to your help, Pagoth grows to be the dominant power in Hallowshire, overseeing the region's transformation into a realm of anarchic fecundity. Over time, the people here shed their mortal skins and change into a cornucopia of outlandish forms. Though all are equal in heaven, you cannot help but favor these new citizens. And in neighboring Pwyll, Hlud, in time, comes to be the town's mayor and guides his people through this new age of wonders. By calming the Entombed One's rage, you ensure that the Queen of Silver can lead her people into this era of possibility with a newfound hope. Sure enough, the inhabitants of the Endless Realm soon find their skin a little more smooth, their throats a little less raspy, some even notice saplings sprouting among the dead trees. In time, the newly titled Kingdom of Vedant and the neighboring Union are known as firm allies, sharing commerce and culture alike. In time, the realm is known as the Kingdom of Vedant, and in a twist of irony, it is now the inhabitants of Vedant who peer across at their neighbors with curiosity and disgust. For the bizarre practices of Pagurth's Hallowshire seem abhorrent. In the Clockwork Kingdom, the power of the angel supercharges Afra's reforms beyond her wildest dreams. After a period of total chaos, the renamed kingdom of New Cardova becomes a beacon of radical ingenuity where anything is possible and ordinary folk reinvent themselves seven times before breakfast. Cardovan society swiftly becomes incomprehensible to all but the most broad-minded outsiders. 
spreading lunatic machines and persistent reality glitches across the sky realms. Elders warn that those who emigrate there will forfeit their very humanity. But for surprisingly many people, that's the attraction. With Vela defeated, the chains that bound your mysterious benefactor shatter, freeing the entity at last. You never cross paths with it again. In this new age, the High Confessor's body is healed, and she steps out of her coffin as care once more. And as for Vela, the last time you cast your gaze on her, she was embracing her sister, tears in both of their eyes. Thank you.